first stage of my headlight bar. Next stage is I've got to mount it to the car because my wife's cooking a Sunday style dinner. I'm not going to have any more time today to do it because it is Sunday. Um, I've put these in deliberately because I just wanted something a bit stronger in the middle. I actually wanted them a lot longer than that, but I just couldn't get the blast metal to slide on. Um, the one that was going to go here was so big, it just wouldn't have worked. So that's the best I can come up with for the moment. Now we'll use some more of this. We're going to come off the back of here uh, and we're going to go like that on both sides. And then for the mountain points, bearing in mind, they will be like that. Uh, there'll be a bar come off of here and join to the one that's going across there, which will join to the bodywork. That's the plan. Yeah. Right, I'm going to have to do this all over again because I didn't press the record button properly. I've done a test fit on this with the lights taped on. I've even put the wing on the front and it all looks absolutely great. Don't get me wrong, it don't look sinister. It don't look, oh my God, look at that coming down the road, we're dead. It doesn't look any of that. It just looks like, how can I put it? A custom off-road vehicle from 1940. That's what it looks like. That's the only description I can give you. It looks like something from World War II. Um, I like it, it works. So, ball bar is coming off tomorrow, brackets are being made. We're going to run two pipes off here and here and weld them down to the ball bar plate and then another um, um, steel tube going through with holes drilled so we can bolt that on. Half pipes welded on to the actual grill um, on the vehicle with two pipes welded on here so we can run a bolt through there and another one through there. My skull will get um, taken off and welded in under here somewhere. Um, and then we can start thinking about the headlight brackets. Now, we've got to do adjustable tilts on these. So what I plan to do is to cut two pieces of this for each light frame. One will be bolted onto here, uh, sorry, welded onto here solidly. There'll be a hole drilled through. The second plate will have a hole drilled through. That will be welded onto the metal work. There'll be a bolt run through that with a couple of spacers and a nut on the inside. And then on the very back, because we're going to make that long, we're not making that short, we're making it long. There'll be another hole drilled here. Two steel plates. That's it. They weld on to the bar over here. Them two nuts weld on to there. As you see here, I've just got to do the welding a bit better because I need to cut and tidy up those angles because obviously they're a bit dangerous on a head-on basis. And same on the back. And as you can see that now spinning is exactly what these lights will do. They'll twist. 
excuse the blow throughs but the metal is extremely rusty as you can see and we had a few problems but nothing that can't be resolved now they go downhill so uh, when it comes to doing the fascia plate I must remember to adjust the light accordingly in order to get them where I need them there you go now I've made a few adjustments with a hammer because it was sticking I can now alter that headlight and undoing that nut I can now tilt it that way that way so everything now falls on how good I make the loops uh, not loops sorry the rings uh, that go in place for the headlights to clip onto and uh, I'm just debating at the moment whether to attempt to clean up some of these rot holes I think I should but I don't know we'll see so we've got what's left we've got to make a bottom plate which I haven't done yet because I'm not sure how this is going on I've got to make a bottom plate for that and then and this is subject to negotiations with the grinder and the welder later on tomorrow maybe I don't know we've got a bar to come off here and go round I borrowed a pipe bender for this this time um, whether it's strong enough I've never used one of those before so there you go I was just trying to get it as far ahead as I could because tomorrow is Tuesday. Tomorrow is AOC. I don't know if they're going to let me film, so I don't expect it at this point. But if they do, then great. Because there's a lot going on down there. I'd like to show you. Um, I rang around Ipswich all day, all morning. And I rang up a fiberglass manufacturer in Ipswich. He actually makes stuff. He doesn't sell his resin as a rule. He makes it. Um, that sort of my guard stuff like that. And he put me onto another place, which I am now heading up to. And I don't know why we're having this conversation, because I can't tell you where this place is. I asked if I could film, he said, not a chance. And there are some companies like that that are funny like that. And I don't mind, I appreciate that he doesn't want the cameras in his, his property. So, I'm afraid to say, we're going to go from here, on the video, to in there, when I get back. Literally... Da, 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 da. Sorry, there didn't go as well as I had planned in my head. But crikey's, I finally got some resin catalyst. There isn't enough resin now. I, I think I need more than that. But anyway, look, I, I got some, and it was an emergency that I got it today. So beggars can't be choosers, as the way I look at it. I paid the guy forty quid in the end for that. He did only ask for thirty sum up because I was so desperate, and he was the only one prepared to sell it to me. I gave him forty. I also went down to Fox's Marina and got myself a new paddle roller because when I was doing that one I found that I needed a bigger roller the little farty one I got was really for little tight intricate areas and I had a big flat surface under here to roll that is still soft but it's definitely not as soft as it was the other day so it is curing we still might get to use that one I don't know yet I might lay up the other side first and come back to that in a couple of days and see where we're at because um, I don't like wasting the stuff and as I said to you before it will go hard eventually but it will take a very see that's very soft under there and I've got a lay up underneath so the only thing I can really do with that as I'm going to be laying up is I can burn it and I'm not joking if I get a flame and literally burn the residue off while I brush it back by hand that will bring the fibers to the surface and then I can lay my steels across that I said I was going to do and then lay over the top with the new stuff which will go rock hard that actually would work we'll see but there is my resin right I've got a repair to do on here I got it wrong that's got to be cut off and moved that bolt there needs to be behind that line um, didn't quite get it as accurate as I thought but I was rushing it yesterday in fact I probably put that one on wrong because that was the one I was rushing but I'm just going to shift that one over there because it'll be easier right moving on okay it's 12 midnight I've extended that so I'll have a little indented piece go in there nothing I can do about it um, I'll have to work that out at a later date with some filler or some extra Actually, it'll have to be filler. <sighs> I've just figured out what I've done. But anyway, it's, it's neither here nor there. It's just the extension. It takes it down to the floorboards. Um, I'm waxed up. All my matting is cut, ready to go on. 
first procedure, that's the first layup. So we go in across there and we go in across there. Smaller pieces go on the sides. Second row, that row, then goes in all the way up. And then the third row, that one, they go straight in the middle. And then the off cut, which is tucked away under there, I chop that all up to build the sides up. My back is very dry. This is actually a good layer because you can see straight through it. And that's usually a good sign, but I've still got areas where it hasn't quite pregnated. That last piece I put on was actually a soak up coat one, just to see if I'd overloaded it with resin or underloaded it. And I got it just right because there's just enough fiberglass sticking through, top stra chop strand matting poking through. I could do with a little tiny dab, but I'm probably not going to do it to be honest because it's going to get painted. So, there's four layers on this in, in the order that I specified. I've been out here about two hours almost. And uh, that's your lot. Yep, you're not imagining that. I am still up. Okay. Oh man, that has gone. That has cured beautifully. That's, um, that's in its gel state at the moment. So I'm not peeling that off. But... I mean that's gonna that's gonna separate from that really easily. Yeah, yeah I'm pleased with that. Oh, that's warm as well. <laughs> it is there. Really warm. I might have overdone it with a catalyst. <laughs> mind right well situation is tomorrow we'll peel that flipping thing off and uh, I was going to lay another one up straight away but I've decided I won't do that I am instead gonna um, offer this up onto the vehicle so we'll trim it first we'll mark us all out where we can with a black pen so we know where we're cutting and uh, we'll then lay it on the vehicle we'll measure because this is the driver's side and I haven't planned anywhere where this is going at the moment on the driver's side so we're going to measure off the lines that i put on the passenger side transfer them over to the driver's side and then we'll offer this up into the same position and then we'll do the cut to an angle which we got on this one over there look so we'll do that cut and uh once we've done that cut and we know it's going to fit we'll then glue that cut into there so we've got so we're returning that part but we're going across with it. You'll see what I'm talking about tomorrow. Um, and then the first part of the seal that's the hard bit but once you've got that there you go once you get that first bit broke There we go. 
Yeah, scratched up there a bit, but the car filler will sort that out. I've got to sand it down anyway. It's nice and hard, nice and thick, and it's a good shape. And that, my friends, is going to work well. And the foil, that turned out to be a, a very good idea in the end. So we'll checker plate the top, as we spoke about, and then we'll gently fill up around all those areas. Oh, do you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to put my blinking pen mark in. That's annoying. I'll have to see if I can drop it in the mould. You see what I meant around here? So I'll leave that built out, because I don't mind that, but we'll have to fill up around those areas. A couple of air bubbles, look. That's a bit of a pain, another one there. So we've got a little bit of reworking to do. We're not cutting that bit, as far as my memory serves. Um, but we will be cutting, will we be cutting that bit? I can't remember. Yeah, we might actually cut it along there, actually thinking about it. So down, we may have to cut that off to that edge there and then shove that underneath. But we won't know that. And uh, I don't know about you, but that looks like that might be a little bit twisted. Heads. No, that's, that's fine. Right then, so we need to move this out of the way. We need to get that on the bench. We need to mark out where we're cutting. I'm going to use my multi-tool to do this because the grinder will put dust everywhere. And because this stuff has properly now cured, that dust will get in the pores and that will itch for hours. Whereas that one, it wasn't quite... The fibres weren't very small when I was cutting that one because it was still in its gel state. So, uh, no. But yeah, I'm pleased with that at the moment anyway. Um, I am going to need some more resin though. Okay. So I've measured it out as best as I can get it and I've cut that piece off which has now got to be glued on the inside so the next part of this is going to be loads of clamps um, we'll put the glue in which is basically bridging compound I've already damaged this damn thing fell off because there's nobody to help me hold it and... <laughs> so now I've got to drill into that and try and get resin in there to fill the cavity up damn annoying or I cut that all out and re lay up that area but yeah whatever um, yeah so I need to put some uh, bridging compound in there basically I've got to make that up I'm going to use some of the old stuff I'm, I'm risking it really because that don't blink in hold huh. that could be a problem I'm running low I think I should just bite the bullet use up what's left Get some more off that guy tomorrow or later on today if I've got time to shoot down there which I don't think I have because it's gone 12 midday now um, although I could while this is dry and shoot out and get another tub we'll get that one topped up it's, uh, it's a possibility Um, yeah, anyway, I've got to fill it and I've got to clamp it, so. Resin, with a load of that, of literally one handful I threw in there. What you do is you get your resin, you put your catalyst in first, mix that all up, wait till it turns a colour, that way it's bit, and then you put this stuff in, and put one handful at a time, depending on how much resin you've done. This will give you, and you can make this as thick as you want, but this will give you a bridging compound, which is also used as a glue in the industry for gluing parts together. Um, people, amateur, um, non, how can I put it, the ones who have never done this sort of job before don't actually know this. They assume they've got to get a load of tape and tape everything. No, you glue it because, you know, this is what you're putting back into the, you know, the mold, isn't it? So, into the item you're making. That's ready.
slap it on there instead. I won't lie, it's not the easiest to work with. in place, um, clamps are off, the um, glass is hard and I don't want to put a sander over it because I don't want to cover myself in dust and itch rows. So I put my motor tool over it and chipped off all the straggly bits and I will now cut out one singular piece, possibly two, and glass all the way down there and fill in that area there. That's it's now sealed up on the inside edge. I have put the cut in for the turret. I will let that go off. Once that hits a gel state, which will be the easiest time to trim it, I'll trim all these bits off that hang out. And then we can start making up the oh, I'm naked. So this is dried. I'm happy with that. Very happy with that actually. So you can see where the tape was, this is the worst one, these two here. Okay, new day. I have had to cut that piece out there and bring it out a little bit because it wasn't quite flushing up against the bodywork. We do have a problem coming up now because I've had um, to put so much resin in that area and matting that I've lost the, the the angle that I wanted to put the angle iron in. We cannot do that now. All I can do is drill my holes and glass in some washers um, and that's it, that's all I can do. So to gain some extra strength, and I was thinking about this earlier anyway, I uh, actually thinking about this at the beginning of the, before I even started, you know, when I was planning out with that one, I might try and put an external framework around the outside and bolt that frame into the mudguard itself so what I'm thinking of doing and I don't know if I can do it yet if, even if it's doable but because I've got just a little pipe bender that's like one of those and they ain't that great but um, and I would like to get some weld on uh, pipes as well and they're difficult to get hold of at the moment there's nobody in it which is selling them anymore and it's all online and uh, anyway um, I was thinking about coming off here with a bar and then following that line all the way around and then coming up it gets a bit tricky when it comes over here um, but that could go on to the um, headlight bar that I've got going on and then I can then run some bars and over the top so they sort of come like that and then over and then that might just give me some strength and I can bolt those in either using the upper bars through the middle of that or we can come in at the side and that will hold the side in place. Um, it would give it some external protection, probably more protection than what it would get if I didn't do it. So this is fiberglass, this stuff is not very generous. When it comes to taking knocks and cracks and bangs it just breaks it's not like aluminium where it's got a little stretch in it you know it can move a bit and you can then heat it up and put it back you can't do any of that with fiberglass it's a nightmare but it's an easy this has been easy to work with this has been easier than trying to do it with the metal i mean i've got a form here now i could actually lay that up the other way up and start cutting out sheets of metal and welding them up and laying them on this until i've got this exact shape i could do that um so that option's there as well if this does not work out but i'm rather happy with what i've got going on here at the moment so i, I, I kind of want to keep it yep that is a, a wing that i made previously as an experiment i kind of decided to go with it and it's based on the fact that this stuff is flipping expensive um and i'm getting tired of doing it now uh I've got another two more of these to make at a later date, so the resin I bought the other day, I'd like to try and keep it if I can, for as long as I can. Uh, 
I'm hoping after my previous conversation with you guys that we'll be on the back end of that thing pretty quickly. So in the meanwhile, I'm going to try and salvage this if I can. There's no guarantee on it. I mean, I still might end up having to make another one. Uh, so we're going to glue that down. I've already marked out and cut. That's got to come out there. I've wire brushed this surface. It's actually starting to get quite hard. I mean, it's still soft in places. Um, definitely feels it. I think it'll be fine. Honestly, I do. I think it'll be fine. It's, it's this. This one didn't get as much um, resin as what that um, catalyst as what that one did. Now I've wire brushed under here, and it's rock hard below that surface. So it does appear to be that that surface is the issue. Um, so I'm going to get the wire brush on all of it at a later date once I've got this one moulded in place. So that's ready to go in. We're going to put that in first, and then after that. And that's gone hard we'll lay that entire area up and then we'll get some alley from that and we'll put a block of wood across there put the alley on block of wood there put the alley on and then we'll mask up around that and then we'll literally lay that whole corner up all over again so it has a step uh we'll trim up. i have trimmed all of that off so this now needs a sanding disc over the top of all of that one to smooth it out so a belt sander across there wouldn't be a bad thing and then here we've got to curve all of that so maybe the belt sander will be useful for that as well then we've got to put one layer of chop strand all the way around just one all the way up to about there blend it in with the sander after and this wing will be ready for prepping and filling and painting but before that happens it needs to be placed on the vehicle I've also cut that off at the front so it now matches the um, prototype one that we started. Now that is now fully cured on there. I'm actually quite impressed about that. So I will wire brush the rest of this down and then I will put... Uh, Look at that. that is it for the end of the day. <laughs> I've laid up that one, filled in as much as I can, added an extension, still not sure if it's long enough but tucked it. I don't care, I've had enough now, I'm getting sick of these. Uh, so that's two done. Two out of four. The other two, uh, I'll do that another time because I'm not joking, I've had enough. So tomorrow we'll trim this one up. We'll put the washers in, we'll drill some holes and then uh, we'll mock fit these onto the vehicle, both of them. And then um, it's a case of once I've mock fitted them, take them off, sand them down, fill them up and paint them and bolt them on for real but not too tight because I need to remove them again. I don't want to muck them up when I start welding the bonnet area up. I've also got to alter the uh, headlight ring. Hopefully my plasma cutter torch will be here tomorrow. Disappointed with myself. I took this off without filming. I wished I had now because that's the outcome. A nice lip there. Um, nice sharp edge there. The same on that side, a nice sharp edge. Um, over here, the join is fixed. All the way along. So it just wants a sanding and I don't even know if I'm going to bother putting a, an overcoat over that. I don't know yet, we'll see. That's nice and thick now, we've thickened that up. So that's that bit. The stained a bit of damage that I've got to sort out here. But, yeah, it's a lot stronger, it's a lot thicker than it was meant to be, it's a lot thicker than that one actually, I mean it wouldn't be a bad idea to put another layer up inside that, but you know, I've got to stop at some, at some point, we're drawing in the line filming until these were fitted, I'm waiting for some glass to dry off, so I'm sitting around doing nothing. It's just that today is Friday and I would like to get these uploaded. Now, I'm not doing anything to these in the sense of filler and paint. I just want to get them on and get the final bit of film done because this is getting long-winded now. So I have marked out how that one is going on, but it suddenly dawned on me that I may not have them on correctly on the other side. So I'm waiting for the resin to dry so I can line these two up and then I can 
offer that one up to that and work out where the turret properly sits because at the moment I'm having some issues with that. There is also some massive gaps still against this, but I have a solution for that. So that is not so much of a problem. And I'll talk about that in a little while. So Right, we are finally done for the week. I'm hoping those wings sit correctly. But I'm at 100%, I did measure them. I think one moved. I'll have to double check it next time. But yeah, now we've just got to make our minds up whether we're going to um, cut down these or not. Because if I place that there, that possibly looks better than it do. Let me just do that. There you go. Your thoughts. Leave it wide or bring it down to a smaller length. Bearing in mind that ball bar's got to go. I want that completely gone. I also I also want, I want the ball bag on, but I also want to put some spot lamps in on that big old steel bumper, but can't help feeling they're very vulnerable down there. There's no really where else to put them. Uh, so there you go, the brackets are very large for those lights. I could have done with shoving them straight over a bit further, but okay, so that's kind of where we're at. Now for the, the rear view. That's what you're looking at from standing behind. And the gaps, I said there's gonna be gaps. There isn't that many. But what I was gonna do, I'm not gonna do it now, I'm gonna run a rubber gasket in there now, but what I was going to do was, um, well it's irrelevant, it don't matter, do it. I don't need to explain because I'm not going to do it. Don't need to. Yeah. Sod it. Lots of filling. Bit of checker on there, set that off nicely I think, on both sides, sand the rest of it down, cut into where it's separated and then lay over the top and then sand that back and then fill over that and uh, yeah we'll be good to go. Pleased with that. It was the lights that messed it up before. Having these on there like that was not working for the shape that I had. Had I made full-size wings that covered the entire wheels with wheel arches and everything, that would have probably have worked. But that's not the route I've been wanting to go down. So. So, thank you very much for your views. Thank you so much for the likes. Thank you for commenting on the last two videos that got the people that did. Very much appreciate the comments. And please 
as much as I hate asking because it's cheesy but please like and please share the videos and we will see you next week i hope subject to having enough time on my hands and getting the deliveries in what we plan to do is to clean the wheel arches up so they're going to come off we're going to fill them may not paint them yet but we will fill them and we're going to make the rings for the headlights so we can fit those and i would like very much for your comments on what you think about me reducing the width so the lights are closer in I'd very much like to hear your views on that I am going to cut the bull bar off for definite because if you look very closely you can see it's wonky it's not even on there properly uh, something's gone wrong and I'm not sure what at the moment so it needs to go and, and permanently be gone and what else are we going to do that is it really maybe I might start, if I've got enough time on my hands, I might start the metal work if we have um, no rain. That's the subject matter at the moment. That if we can get the welder out with no rain, that would be great. So we'll start welding that area up and getting that scuttle sorted. So I need to get some metal in from somewhere. Once we've got those jobs done, we can then get the mega brush out and we can start getting the rust gone and uh, start looking at putting some paint down nothing special as I said I'm thinking about doing the bonnet yellow the roof yellow um, but the rest of it definitely black so we might bedline the wheel arches back front and rear the step all the aluminium checker plate I might even um, bedline the bottom hut for the door <coughs> oh, excuse me <coughs> oh, <coughs> bedline the bottom half of that door on both sides uh, satin black paint just random satin black paint on the panel that's rusty and mask off the aluminium so we might polish the out yeah <coughs> crying out loud <coughs> mask off the aluminium and keep that as is and uh, once we've got the scuttle done and the bonnet sorted, we'll get some hinges for the bonnet and some latches sorted. And then we'll move on to the windscreen and the mirrors, because I'm not satisfied with those mirrors at the moment. They're, uh, they're not working for me, that's for sure. So we need to look at another alternative. I have a few ideas um, that may involve keeping these existing mirrors. But lose the frames, see if we can find somewhere else maybe just straight bolt them down but they're not easy to see when you're sitting in that cab so once we've got that job done then we'll move on to the interior um, we're going to cut the floors out at some point and deepen that area so i can get my feet in there a bit easier and then we'll start working on the mechanics and at the same time we'll pull it forward with the winch and get that tub off the back and get some more steel and start building the back half of the vehicle which is the most important part of this once we've got the back half done and we've got it wired up and we've got the fuel tank in getting that out the front is the next operation so again thank you very much for your views and your time and i'll see you next week bye bye